morning, everybody. Let's uh, take a look at uh, our storm, which is going to affect us this afternoon, mostly this evening and overnight tonight into early tomorrow morning. Um, it is going to bring some big time weather. Um, really concerned about uh, wind driven power outages, uh, particularly in Rutland and Bennington counties. We're going to talk about why that is, uh, where we should be concerned about. But it don't don't hear me and say, well, I live in you know, I don't live in those places. I shouldn't worry about power outages. Um, I would, if this, uh, I would be worried everywhere about power outages. I would be particularly worried if I lived in those areas. Um, yeah. So let's go through and talk about, first of all, here is our storm ramping up on satellite. You can see we're just exploding. Uh, this a huge line of severe thunderstorms. There's been a lot of tornado warnings overnight with this. This is not normal January weather in some regards. This is not your normal storm. Um, I mean, it's, it's not like, way outside the range of normal, but like, this is just not your average run of the mill January storm. This is a very significant storm for uh, really any time of year, rapidly developing huge scope, tons of moisture, lots of wind. Um, the wind field from this has just really, uh, there was wind advisories basically from Texas all the way to the Canadian border. Um, it is gonna be a huge wind storm um, and also bring a, a, a very significant amount of rain um, and some snow here to us um, before we change to rain. We are thankfully, I think, north of the worst of the chances for some flooding. Um, if you live in southern uh, Connecticut, uh, near Metro New York City, a lot of northern New Jersey, I'd be extremely worried about some, uh, some the chances for some pretty significant flash flooding and flooding of rivers and streams. I think here we mostly avoid that. We stay just cool enough that we don't melt a lot of snow. The rain does get absorbed into the snow for an ex for uh, to a decent amount here. And that will kind of help protect us here, but um, not that the, we could have some minor flooding, uh, mostly like uh, kind of splat, uh, like ponding on roads and things kind of things uh, is not impossible. Uh, Bennington County is under a flood watch, um, but I think we're mostly north of the real significant threat there. So that's one thing we don't have to worry about, even though we might get an inch and a half to two inches of rain on top of um, getting about a half an inch or uh, maybe up to half an inch worth of liquid amount that falls as snow to start. So yeah. Two to two and a half inches of total uh, liquid equivalent precipitation, but a lot of it, some of it falls as snow. And then, like I said, some of, we're not down in, down in Connecticut. They're looking at maybe four to five inches of rain in some places. That really causes problems. We're not going to, I don't think we're going to see that. We're not going to have precipitation long enough. It is going to come. It's going to rain. It's going to snow very heavy for a little while. And then it's going to rain very heavy overnight. And as that happens, the winds are going to explode over the top of us. And we are going to see uh, wind gusts. Um, certainly almost everybody has a chance of a 50 mile an hour wind gusts, uh, lots of places in Bennington and Rutland counties will see 60 to maybe 65 mile an hour wind gusts wouldn't even, uh, give the possibility of a 70 mile an hour wind gust would not be shocking in a few places, um, sustained winds, um, in the, uh, it will be more like gusty. It'll kind of, uh, in a lot of places, we'll, we'll obviously have sustained winds, but it's going to be gusty. All right, let's keep moving with the graphics. Cause I got a bunch of them. I don't want to talk forever on this. Uh, Radar, we're going to uh, zoom in on this, particularly in the south. Um, a lot of this to the north, this is not hitting the ground yet. We're still several hours away. I don't think we see any uh, snowflakes, uh, at least of any significance, until mid-afternoon at the earliest, two, three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and then uh, we stay snow. Everybody is snow to start. Um, and probably by five o'clock, we're starting to mix, particularly in valley locations uh, to the south, places like uh, uh, Bennington will be like the first to mix. Um, and then that will take till maybe about 10 o'clock before everybody has pretty much changed to all rain. Um, and in that time, um, maybe not at the very beginning, but just soon after the very beginning, um, it could snow heavy for a bit. Um, the roads will be slippery tonight. I would think if you're going to be out there traveling anytime from 4 p.m. on, I would be quite concerned, maybe even 3 p.m. on. I would be aware that it could be getting slippery fast. Um, and then uh, it'll be pretty treacherous driving for a brief time tonight before we change over to rain. Um, that'll kind of help wash off the roads, um, although it could still be slick in a few spots tomorrow morning with some of the leftover slop on the roads. You have to keep an eye out on that, but um, the road conditions will improve. I think in terms of snowpack, it's not going to, thankfully, we got just enough snow on the front side and the temperatures aren't going to peak for too long. I think we are going to mostly save our snowpack that we've got. Um, it's, this is not great for skiing. It's definitely not a net win for the ski areas, but I don't think it's a huge net loss. Um, except for places, runoff areas, there could be places where obviously you get runoff on the mountains. It kind of washes out parts of trails. That'll be obviously something fun for the groomers to fix. I'm sure they're looking forward to it, but it shouldn't be as kind of devastating as it could be. All right. If we look here is, um, radar, 
across. You see Alabama here. We've got a lot of reds and purples in here. Um, this the whole line is basically severe at the moment. Uh, I think there was last I checked, there was two or three tornado warnings down here as well. Just very severe, uh, very strong for this time of year in January. And uh, you can see just massive amounts of moisture heading in our direction um, as we go forward. Um, if we take a look at uh, temperatures, you can see we do have some cold air in place. This is kind of holding off um, uh, the warmer airs to our west. We got a lot of uh, mid and upper 30s in Pennsylvania, but we cooled off a lot of teens, some low 20s here in southern Vermont, um, and even colder air kind of to our north and east, uh, some teens and some uh, actually even a single number down there in Keene where they had some good uh, kind of, uh, uh, I'm sure there's a pretty good low level inversion there. But um, yeah, so cooler air in place, that'll help start us off as snow. We'll be chilly today. It'll feel chilly um, before temperatures start to warm towards the afternoon. So as we look at what this looks like, what it's gonna, what kind of what the precipitation uh, looks like, here's the storm coming through. Here's um, just one model's reflection, but it gives a pretty good idea. Um, so here we go, we've got, <clears throat> you can see the front edge is snow. As it approaches that colder air that we've got over us in New England, it stays snow a little bit longer, but you can see valley locations fill in and then everybody fills in with rain as things blow through. Um, and then uh, obviously the storm comes through. The wind period is not gonna be real long, but it is gonna be very strong. So here's my snowfall map, then we're gonna talk about winds afterwards. So in general, less than two inches in the green, a lot of valley locations, you're gonna get snow. It will get slippery even in these spots briefly, but um, you're gonna change over relatively quickly. Uh, above maybe say 500 feet, to 750 feet, two to four inches is pretty likely um, enough slushiness that you may still even have, um, at least on the sidewalks or you know, you're going to have to go out and maybe shovel a little bit, at least push the slush. It won't really be shoveling. It'll be more like slopping the slush to the side um, uh, in those two to four inch ranges. And then across the higher elevations, four to six, not uh, unlikely, even at some higher amounts, if you get way up to the top of the ski areas, wouldn't be surprised to see eight, nine inches of snow for some of them before they change over at the very top. Um, but again, still there, um, they will change, everybody changes even to the top of the mountains. Uh, before we uh, before we end, and probably at least half of the precipitation, even at the very highest elevations, falls as rain as opposed to snow. But that four to six inches, again, you'll wake up and this will basically be kind of settled way down to just a sloppy inch or two, even at these higher elevations. Roads could still be a little slick if you're trying to go over the mountains. So, you know, places that you normally, Route 9, Route 11, 103, um, 155, places like that as you head through uh, across the mountains it, at those higher elevations could still be kind of sloppy. So if you have to drive those places tomorrow morning, be aware of it. That's probably not going to be your biggest problem though, because the real problem, um, even driving wise, is going to be these power outages. Um, and just where you see power, the widespread, that means we're looking at um, many, many power outages. You should be prepared to lose power for a couple of days. Um, if you live in one of the red areas and even in the yellow, you should be prepared to lose power easily for a day in a lot of places. Significant even here. Um, everybody sees enough wind that I think it causes some problems. In the red areas, we could be talking a couple of days before they can get everything back up and running, maybe even three or four in some spots. You know, we should, yeah, this is uh, probably wind wise one of the worst uh, uh, storms I forecasted in a long time uh, in terms of its uh, threat for power outages. Um, we certainly, uh, this will be more, it'll, it'll, the power outages will look more like if we got like a heavy wet snow where we can get the kind of those really widespread power outages because I think we're going to see that much stuff going on. Also, everybody, you know, if you've got loose stuff outside, now would be, it would be a good time to bring it inside. Um, I, thankfully, you know, uh, most of the holiday decorations are gone, but if they're not, they're just going to blow away. So bring them inside. Just be prepared. Uh, again, 50 to 60 mile an hour winds mean business. Um, and I think a lot of us are going to see them. And 70 mile an hour winds will really mean, mean, diff, mean an issue. Um, if you're driving tomorrow morning, um, just be aware there's going to be uh, tree and leaf debris all over the roads. The, the crown crews will get out and get uh, deal with that as quickly as they can. But obviously, if it involves power lines, it takes a little while because you got to get the power company there before you can deal with that kind of stuff. So it's going to be a bit of a, a go tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, let's go. Oops, sorry. Let's go the right direction here. Um, in terms of uh, why the places that are, why the places, particularly in Bennington and Rutland County, why do they have more issues with the wind? Uh, this graphic is actually from the National Weather Service in Las Vegas, and it kind of talks about a slightly different so circumstance with downsloping winds, but it's basically because the winds are going to be downsloping. So what happens is um, you've got all this wind. This wind is coming from the southeast, and so the wind hits the mountains. It goes kind of across the mountains, and then as it comes down on the backside of the mountains, uh, the wind is actually kind of going downhill. And so it builds momentum. And then as the ground levels off, um, the, the air is actually able to kind of, you know, it wants to push through the ground, but it obviously cannot. So it kind of explodes this way. And also it kind of helps draw um, winds from a little higher up in the atmosphere down because everything is sort of moving down in this 
in the scenario here. And so um, often we talk about upslope sides, which is the eastern and southern facing sides for snow, because often uh, that lift gives a little extra lift to the snowfall. So that happens oftentimes. It's actually the opposite side of the mountains that often have the worst wind. Um, and that's for the same, uh, same reason as the wind comes up and over and then comes down. Um, it kind of bounces off the, uh, the, the floor of the valley where things level out. So sometimes it can be anywhere from kind of mid slope down. So if you're on a north facing slope, not at the top of the mountain, or top of the hill of the mountain, but if you're on a north facing slope or a west facing slope, you're likely to see the strongest winds. That's why the power outages uh, in Bennington and Rutland counties look to be a little bit worse than those in Wind Windham and Windsor County. But we definitely, everybody's got to be prepared for this because the winds are going to be plenty strong. Uh, let's see, in terms of details, snow begins. Uh, that should not say tomorrow, that's today. Mid-afternoon today. I uh, must have not have changed that, that part of the graphic from yesterday. Snow transitions from rain from to, to to rain from about 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. south to north and for, as elevations go up. Winds ramp up between about 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. So just about the time of changeover, I think, is when uh, the winds really start to ramp up. If you're going to lose power, if you wake up tomorrow morning and you have power, you're, you're, you probably will keep it almost certainly by that point. But a lot of us are going to wake up without power. Everyone should be ready to lose power, especially if you live in the west or north side of a hill or mountain in Bennington, Rutland counties. Again, be prepared for a couple of days. If you live in a more isolated spot, three or four, um, again, that may not happen entirely. Hopefully it doesn't, but I want you to be prepared for it. School closings and delays, definitely uh, a possibility just because there could be a lot of power issues. A lot of places buses can't get because there are trees down um, and some leftover slick conditions in the mountains is possible as well. So but to wait and see on that. I don't know how significant those will be, but they're definitely a possibility. Yeah, lots going on. Uh, and after this storm, there's another one on Friday, which is very significant itself maybe not quite as significant as this one thankfully but a similar setup so we're gonna have to kind of keep looking at that as well whoops that's not what i was gonna pass that's my thing from yesterday uh let me pop up patrons for you sorry about that um i want to give a quick shout out to my patrons to help support what i do here at the west river other guy if you haven't subscribed to my channel before i would encourage you to do so helps make sure you don't miss any of these videos especially the extra videos i will be back um my patrons get a, a weekend forecast tomorrow um, and then on Thursday morning, I'll be back with a look at the next storm for everybody. And then Friday, I obviously have my weekend forecast for everybody. So yeah, that's what's going on. Thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks for watching my videos. I'll be back soon.